Alright, so let's take a couple minutes to talk about machines and how they are useful to us. Um, a machine basically is any device that is used to make our work easier. Uh, so it's an easier way for us to transfer energy. Uh, two ways that the machines make our work easier. Uh, machines can change the direction of your force, such as pulleys. If you pull down on a pulley, it pulls the object up. So uh, it changes your direction of force. And also machines multiply the force that you apply to it. So they um, can change the direction of force to make it easier on us to apply a force. Or they can actually multiply the force as well. Um, quick note though, you have to do work on the machine and then the machine does work on the object. So you still do work, it just makes your work easier. And there are six simple machines that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about levers, pulleys, wheel and axle, incline plane, wedges and screws. Um, so let's go into that. First uh, simple machine is a lever, and a lever is basically a long rigid bar uh, with a support that's called a fulcrum. The fulcrum is this rock right down here in this, in this picture. So the fulcrum is what the rod pivots on. And um, a couple examples are crowbars and carjacks. So a lever is a simple machine. Obviously this guy could not move this rock on his own. So he created a simple machine with a bar and fulcrum to make a lever to move the rock. So that's a lever for you. Uh, the next simple machine is a pulley, which is basically a special type of lever. It has a grooved wheel, which uh, ropes pass through. And this is a complicated pulley system over here um, that is actually called a block and tackle. But... Um, is pretty much a, a pulley is pretty much a grooved wheel where ropes pass through and you can have a single pulley or you can have a combination of pulleys um, the more pulleys you have the easier the work is for you and a couple examples that we uh, might be familiar with the window shade pulls whenever you pull down the window shades those have pulleys block and tackle which is this picture over here um, a well, whenever they pull up the water from a well, that's a pulley. And flagpoles have pulleys also to um, put the flags up on top of the flagpole. Uh, the next type of simple machine, wheel and axle, is uh, also, in a way, a special type of lever. It has a wheel, such as this right here, and it also has the axle that is attached to the wheel. And, you know, a pencil sharpener is an example of a wheel and axle egg beater. Also wheel and axles on your car, wheelbarrow, things like that. So we use a wheel and axle a lot to make our work easier. That's another type of simple machine. Also, we have inclined planes. Just a flat surface where one end is higher than the other, such as this. Or a ramp, such as moving ramps, wheelchair ramps. And it's used to make our work easier. For instance, on this picture, the guy pushing the wheelbarrow up the, um, up the inclined plane, it would be very difficult for him to just pick up the wheelbarrow and put it inside of this building over here. So he created an inclined plane so he can change the direction of his force to make it easier and easier on him. Also, we have wedges. A wedge is pretty much an inclined plane but it has usually two sloping sides, um, such as you know door stops, what we put underneath our door to keep the door from moving, knives, axes, scissors, chisels. Um, it's a wedge is pretty much a double inclined plane, and an axe is an example, so the axe is a doubled inclined plane. Helps to make work easier. And then a screw is also an inclined plane, but it's a special type where you have the um, object, which is like this metal rod right here, and then there's an inclined plane that wraps all the way around it, slowly going up. So it's a very slow inclined plane that goes all the way up. So we also need to talk about the mechanical advantage of these simple machines. The mechanical, tell mechanical advantage tells you how many times 
your force has been multiplied due to the machine. So mechanical advantage, which is MA, is equal to the resistance force, which is also just the weight of the object, and the F divided by the effort force, which is the force that you apply on the machine. So if I want to know the mechanical advantage of some sort of simple machine, and I know the object I'm trying to move is 10 newtons, and it only takes me 5 newtons of force to move it, that means my mechanical advantage is 2. So my force was multiplied by 2. So, um, and you know the higher the mechanical advantage number, the better. There's also another type of mechanical advantage we need to be aware of, and that is the ideal mechanical advantage. So the ideal mechanical advantage is based on machines that transfer 100% of your energy. Um, this is something that is not done. There's not actually a time when 100% of the energy is transferred, but that's what the ideal mechanical advantage is based on. We can make the assumption that the machine is 100% efficient, and we can go from that. So the equation that we would use would be uh, IMA, ideal mechanical advantage, is equal to the effort distance, which is DE, uh, which is the distance you apply a force, um, divided by DR, which is the resistance that the distance, uh, the distance that the machine moves the object. So, let's say for instance you uh, you pull, you're working with a pulley system, and you pull the rope 20 meters, and the object that you are using to lift with the pulley ends up moving 5 meters. Well, that means that your ideal mechanical advantage, in this case, was 4. And probably the most important thing we need to know about machines is their efficiency. The efficiency shows how much work you put into the machine is actually used to do the work on the object. So um, you're going to put work into the object and how much work is being put out after you uh, put the work in, how much work is being brought out. So, And that, that'll tell you the efficiency. So if you use these, this equation right here, work out divided by work in times 100, you will get your efficiency. So let's say, for instance, um, I'm trying to find the efficiency of some machine that I was using. And I applied 10 joules worth of work, and the machine put out 8 joules worth of work. I'd multiply that by 100, and that equals an 80% efficient machine. Um, you got to keep in mind, machines cannot multiply your work or energy. They can only multiply the force. So... However much work you put in or however much energy you put in, um, you're not going to get all of that back. Uh, it's going to be lost in some form, usually sometimes heat or sound. Those are some ways that you can lose that energy. But machines don't uh, multiply your energy. They only multiply the force that you apply to the object. And men en machines cannot do more work than you put into them. So however much work you put into them is the same amount of work you're going to get out of the machines.